T-TECH Course 4 Student Outline Section 10 Valuation Techniques for Fixed Assets. Learning Objectives. Explain the three approaches to value. Know the concept of value in use versus value in exchange. List the basic steps in the cost approach to value. List the basic steps in the sales comparison approach to value. List the basic steps in the income approach to value. Introduction. This section deals with the valuation of fixed asset, assets method for valuing personal property. Fixed what? Fixed assets. Fixed assets. I suddenly developed the list. Um, oh, y'all would kill me. Y'all would absolutely kill me. Y'all would be so sick of me by the time I got to read that first paragraph. Oh, Lord. This, this section deals with the valuation of the fixed assets method for valuing personal property, fixed assets installed and employed versus idle, not installed, or not in productive use. Okay, go back to right. Here. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> so we'll reread that sentence for the other listeners' pleasure. <laughs> this section deals with the valuation of fixed assets, method for valuing personal property, fixed assets installed and employed versus idle, not installed or not in productive use. Number two, in the appraisal of fixed assets, the appraiser must consider all of the available data before determining how to appraise personal property. There may be a very good records that indicate all of the fixed assets as well as the acquisition or purchase dates. In some cases, research may yield sales prices of comparable items and enough data to determine the amount of obsolescence that has occurred. In other cases, there may be a there may be good evidence of rental or lease rates for a specific piece of equipment. Available data determines the proper valuation approach or approaches to employ. Number three, the three common methods of valuing personal property. Um, cost, the most common in personal personal property valuation. Uh, comparable sales. Not too useful in valuing personal property, but can be used with caution. Income, a good approach for leased equipment. Value in use versus value in exchange. You skip that. It's important concepts. Oh, I didn't even see that. It's on the bottom of that page. That's why I didn't see it. So, be important concepts. Um, value in use versus value in exchange. The concept of value in use implies that personal property is installed and, the con and in continual use for generating income or performing its, fun its function. The value in exchange concept implies that personal property is a commodity and is not installed or if installed is to be removed from its present site and reinstalled elsewhere. Value in use. The cost approach to value apply, is applied to value in use. The value in use usually sets the upper limit of value. The following tests are used to determine whether the value in use concept applies to industrial machinery and equipment. Number one, the machine is installed. Number two, the highest and best use is as installed for the purpose of producing income or a product service. Number three, the machine is part of the business enterprise used to produce income. Number four, the machine is state of the art or a percentage of its productivity is measured and economical, that is its operation is economically feasible. Number three, value and exchange approach to fixed assets. The following tests are used to determine whether the value in exchange concept applies to industrial machinery and equipment. The machine is not installed or is to be removed if in place. Uh, the HBU is not considered because the property is not in use. The machine is not employed as part of the business enterprise. 
the machine is not state-of-the-art, such as the comparable sales approach is used in value in exchange and compares recent sales with property under appraisal, and data are, an, data are analyzed for comparability to subject of appraisal, and sales data provided, the amount of the sales price applicable to just the inventory can be determined and subtracted. Sales of assets that are considered an exchange value can still be used to value assets that are installed and productive. However, to do that, one must make some adjustments to the sold item to make it like the piece of equipment we are trying to appraise. Adjusting for things like sales tax and freight and installation are necessary to accomplish this. Obstacles in adjusting sales for market conditions. Uh, the sale of the inventory or business was a result of bankruptcy, going out of business, merger, or other event. The goodwill associated with the name and or other factors related to the business operation cannot be valued separately in most sales transactions. If the appraiser has access to both buyers and sellers books, more information can be obtained regarding the allocation of the sale price to the standard categories. See the starting point, data. Appraisers typically find that they either have good workable data or that it is limited or non-existent. It is not a mystery that there are more that the more complete the data, the easier the appraiser's job and the more accurate the results. The three keys to good data are Source, accuracy, and applicability. Uh, number two, good accounting records. The uh, value of good records generally provides good value estimates, can be used to value similar property in other appraisals. Questions for reviewing accounting, accounting records to establish validity. Um, have the records been audited? How current are the records? Can the appraiser determine the different categories of assets? Is the method of accounting used by the taxpayer distinguishable? Challenges with good records, time consuming to analyze, difficult to acquiring the information from the owners, understanding the financial information provided, poor or no accounting records, have inaccurate value estimates due to a lack of information. The inventory values become somewhat of a guessing game. Necessitates discovery from a from source other than taxpayer records. Generally requires more on-site visits to determine both quantities and values of personal property. Benefits from on-site visits. You can count units. <laughs> You're just making it louder. <laughs> um, make notations on quantity, quality of personal property. Measure individual items. Identify the physical location or situs of property. Take photographs. Determine property ownership. Methods of obtaining records. Contact the business directly to obtain personal property information. Contact public sources of information. Develop quantity quality records from records or other businesses in similar activities. Consult with experts in the same field or trade. Review trade publications or manuals for property types. D, the three approaches to value fixed assets. The cost, income, and sales comparison approaches should be considered in the appraisal of proper, personal property. The degree of dependence upon any one approach changes with the availability of reliable data. Certain types of personal property do not readily lend themselves to development of all three generally accepted approaches. In many instances, 
Sufficient sales data of assets in use in a business is not available at the retail trade level, so more reliance may be placed on the cost and income approaches. E, the cost approach. This is the most common and generally applicable approach for the valuation of personal property. Costs used in the cost approach can be historical and or original acquisition, replacement or reproduction costs, although often only original or acquisition costs are readily available for personal property. The cost approach provides an estimate of value based on the depreciated cost of the property. Total acquisition cost includes freight, trade-in allowance, installation, and any fees incurred to get machinery operational. Number two, appraisers must recognize that appraisal and accounting practices may differ in, dep in depreciating machinery. Accounting practices provide for recovery of the cost of an asset, while appraisal practices strive to estimate a value related to the current market. Number three, a percent good or depreciation table estimates a percentage of remaining value of an asset. Number four, the reasons for focusing original costs new... Oh, the reasons for what? The reasons for using original cost new less depreciation as the basis for valuation are that the information is easily obtainable. This method lends itself readily to a computerized math appraisal Format. <laughs> Format. It's a it's a typo. No, it's not. Looks like it on mine. Oh, that's the cursor. It looked it looked like a typo. Anyways, sorry. Um. Just start over. The reasons for using original cost new less depreciation as the basis for valuation are that the information is easily obtainable. This method lends itself readily to a computerized mass appraisal format. The taxpayer has a permanent record of the cost and the trend and depreciation table can be easily updated. However, appraisers are not required to use this information to determine the value of the property. Sometimes a business or assets are sold. The new owner lists the original cost but uh, list the original cost but appraisers may use the prior cost information to value the property example of the cost approach a custom embroidery business opened four years ago all of the equipment was new and the total installed cost of the equipment was twenty five thousand dollars all of the original equipment is still installed and in use and is considered to be in good condition. When purchased and installed, the equipment was considered to have an economic life of 20 years. Adjusting for inflation, a factor of 1.10 has been determined to be the index factor. What is the current value on the equipment? Our CN of the equipment 25,000 times 1.10 equals $27,500. Using the age divided by life method, 4 divided by 20 equals 0 0.20 or 20%. So 27,500 times 0 0.20 equals $5,500 of depreciation. So 27,500 less the 5,500 equals 22,000 in current value. Alternatively, if depreciation is 20% good, no. no, if depreciation is 20%, percent good would be 80%. So 27,500 times the 0.80 is 22,000 current value. 22,000 current value, yeah. And number five, sources of information on property economic life and prices. The appraisal district's appraisal role, the publications such as Marshall Valuation Service, IRS publications and tables, trade association publications, market price guides such as NADA, Black Book of Valuation, Truck Blue Book, Green Guides. F. Sales Comparison Approach, Market Value. 
The sales, appar sales comparison approach may have limited application in appraising machinery and equipment used in business since sales of used items are generally few and are often liquidation sales, which are typically not representative of the market value at the, real, at the retail trade level in use in a business. On the other hand, list prices, including delivery and installation costs, can be good indications of value when supported by the marketplace. Be sure that the property is valued at the proper, proper trade level. Trading cash discounts should be subtracted from the list prices, particularly if the equipment sold is still at the wholesale level of trade. If reliable sales data is available, the adjustment process can be applied in the same manner as in real property, with one exception. Sales of comparable real, real properties usually have a positive adjustment from for time because of appreciation. Um, since depreciation of machinery and equipment may outpace in, inflationary effects, Sales of this type of property may require a negative adjustment over time when inflationary effects and depreciation are combined. Example of the sales comparison approach. A group of machines have a production rate of 5,000 units per hour. They are used on three four-hour shifts. Sales data on similar equipment reveals the following. Sale number one has a selling price of seventy two of seventy two seven thousand twenty dollars. No, no, I'm trying that again. Seven hundred twenty thousand dollars units per day. Uh, seventy two thousand. Sale number two selling price is five hundred fifty thousand units per day. Fifty five thousand. Sale number three, 620,000 units per day, 62,000. So sale number one, seven, 720,000 divided by 72,000 is equal to $10. 550,000 divided by 55,000 is equal to $10. And 620,000 divided by 62,000 is equal to $10. What is the value of the subject equipment if 20,000 dollars in installation costs are necessary to put it into production. <coughs> 5,000 times 12 hours equals, do that first, um, 5,000 times 12 hours first times $10 is equal to $600,000 indicated sales price. 600,000 plus 20,000 installation cost is equal to 620,000. Part G, sales comparison approach using pricing guides. A common practice among appraisers is the use of publications that report sales prices in mass. Auto guides are a good example of this. Sales of pre-owned vehicles nationally or regionally are reported with adjustment factors for accessories and a mileage adjustment that measures typical depreciation per use. Here are some examples of the kind of data reported. Ooh, that. Ugly. Yeah, just, uh, just scroll on down past that. Um, read the problem. Example. Uh, using the NADA guide, a 2009 Honda Accord LX with leather seats, navigation system, and aluminum alloy wheels with 57,000 miles would be valued as follows. 2009 Honda Accord LX, $15,550. Leather seats add six hundred twenty five dollars. Navigation system add seven hundred twenty five dollars. Alloy wheels add four hundred dollars. Fifty seven thousand miles take off seven hundred fifty miles uh, seven hundred fifty dollars. Value is sixteen thousand five hundred fifty dollars. Guides are also published for trucks, mobile homes, airplanes, and boats, etc. Navigation that's worth seven hundred twenty five dollars. You should be just Really happy I have good navigation skills. I'm worth seven hundred and twenty five dollars. I'll pay you out and pay me. Oh, see. Where can we find market price information? Appraisal guides, advertisements, technical publications, trade journals, comparable sales. 
Um, H, income approach. The income approach produces an estimate of the present worth of income to be received in the future. Appraisers use it only when adequate and reliable income and expense data can be obtained. Application of this method for personal property is usually limited to valuing leased equipment. When using the income approach for valuing property, several items must be considered. The expected future income stream, the economic life of the property, and the appropriate market-based capitalization rate. Difficulties in both forecasting future income streams and deriving market-based capitalization rates often discourage appraisers from applying the income approach in valuing personal property and industrial machinery and equipment. The basic income approach formulas are income divided by rate equals value, rate times value equals income, income divided by value equals rate, or known as the IRV triangle. Example of the income approach. A machine rents for $2,000 per month and has a total economic life of eight years. It is five years old. Information about the industry suggests that expenses for the machine are of 20% are typical. A return of an investment of this type should yield a return of 13% per year. The local tax rate is 3%. The time of return of the investment or recapture is over four years. Capitalization rate development. Discount rate 13% or 0.13 plus tax rate equals 2% or 0.02. Recapture is um, 1 divided by 4 which is equal to 0.25 or 25%. The cap rate is equal to 0.40 or 40%. $2,000 per month uh, okay. okay capitalization rate development discount rate equals 13% or 0.13 plus tax rate 2% or 0.02 recapture is 1 divided by 4 or 0.25 or 25% Cap rate is equal to 0 0.40 or 40%. Okay. So what they did there, do you see what they did there? They took the discount rate plus the tax rate plus the recapture rate to get the cap rate of 40%. Oh, they added them all together. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Thank you for pointing that out. You're welcome. So the machine that rents for $2,000 per month they take that 2000 times 12 months, so it's 24000 and multiply that by 0 0.80, which is the... It's like percent good. Okay. Kind of, except they say information about the industry suggests that the expenses for the machine of 20% are typical. So they multiply. The eighty percent is the percent that's not expensed, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So they have that twenty percent expense in the parentheses. I guess, yeah. Okay. Otherwise you would take that you would multiply the twenty four thousand by twenty percent and then deduct it from the twenty four thousand. <coughs> That's interesting. I wanted to write that one down for sure. Stop it, Hayden. I love you, but quit. <laughs> He's going to make me read it again. Are you looking for your charger? It's in the chair. <laughs> hey, having teenagers is fun. Okay, we're going to start this over. $2,000 per month times 12 months is 24000 times... Um, the 80% that is not expense, maybe, we are not positive, but 0 0.80, um, it equals 19200 and then divide that by the 0 0.40 cap rate equals 48000 market value. 
you know what, back up at the top up here was something. Um, in summary, or did you want to explain what we've figured out? So in summary, the most common approach to value used for fixed assets is the cost approach, primarily because that information is the most readily available. However, appraisers should understand the sales comparison and income approaches also because there may be occasions when these yield the best reflection of market value.